Alright, hey guys, Simon here. We are playing Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. We are standing right here in the ruins of the old Roman Forum. And we are going to look at architecture history, yes. So what do we... wait a minute, there's a guy trying to steal my stuff. Hold on. Just before we get on to the architecture, I'm just going to turn around and shank... Come on, come on, come on. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Alright, let's, let's, let's talk about architecture history. So we talked about the Basilica, the something, Constantine's Basilica there, and that thing there, and then one of these arches. Let's look at the other arch. We kind of started on that, but then we didn't really finish it. Let's go to Roman Forum, first of all. Maybe the uh, the maps will be helpful for us to identify some of these things, because I got confused as to which of these arches is the Arch of Constantine, right? So there's an arch right there. See, that is the Septimus Severus arch, okay. Okay, so so the other one must be... If I can find it. See, the other one must be the Arch of Constantine? This one? This one. Arch of Constantine, okay, I see. I see, so... And then this is... What is this? Uh, there's an arch, but uh, there's no name on it. I guess that's not very famous. So the one that we didn't look at is the Arch of Septimus Severus, which is uh, that one. So let's go back to Wikipedia and have a look at that. Arch of Septimus Severus. So apparently the Arch of Constantine is kind of a copy of this, or it was based quite heavily on this. Uh, let's see. The white marble arch of Septimus Severus at the northwest end of the Roman Forum is a triumphal arch dedicated to or dedicated in AD 203 to commemorate the Parthian victories of Emperor Septimus Severus and his two sons, Caracalla and Gaeta, in the two campaigns against the Parthians of the 194. 195 and 197 to 199. The Parthians were, let's just click on that just so you, you have an idea of who these guys are. So they are here. So this is Turkey there, that's Saudi Arabia there, or the Arabian Peninsula. And then Iran is there. Uh, Iraq is there, Iran is there. So the Parthian Empire occupied somewhere around the area of, you know, Persia and kind of creeping towards what we know as the Holy Lands. So this is a... Let's see, I wonder if it's... So they are located on the Silk Road between the Roman Empire and the Han Empire of China. So they are... They benefit quite greatly from the trade between the two ends of the Earth, as it were. Um... And the Romans never really conquered that far. They never really tra traveled that far. So it's kind of interesting how... Yeah, so... Oh, interesting. Much of Parthian history is only known through external sources. These include mainly Greek and Roman histories, but also Chinese histories. So the Chinese talk about them, the Greek and Romans talk about them, but uh, not much of their own history survives, unfortunately. Not a. Unfortunately, yeah, it's not a well documented time. Peace with Rome, caught intrigue, and contact with Chinese generals. The Romans kept attacking them, though, which is kind of interesting because the. I mean, even though. Wow, look at that. A oh, history of Iran, okay. So I think even though the Romans kind of wore them out eventually. The Romans never really expanded that far to the east, so they kind of they kind of went to war against them for no good reason to be honest, because they never, they never conquered the place, they just kind of attacked them. Alright, never mind them. So, they're, they're those guys. Mostly Iranians. Or Persians. Uh, after the death of Septimus Severus, his sons Caracalla and Gator were initially joint emperors. Caracalla and Gator assassinated, or had Gator assassinated in 212. Wow, brutal. So they're brothers, one killed the other. Uh, Gator's memorials were destroyed and all images or mentions of him were removed from public buildings and monuments. Accordingly, Gator's image and inscriptions referring to him were removed from the arch. 
uh, but we still know about him. <laughs> so Caracula tried to have him removed from history, but we still know about him, so wasn't that successful. Uh, the arch was raised on a travertine base, originally approached by steps from the forum's ancient level. The central archway spanned by a richly coffered semicircular vault. Richly coffered semicircular vault has lateral openings to each side archway. Has lateral openings? Oh, I see. If you see the photo, that photo is there. So there's a central thing, there's a side thing, and then from the central arch to the side arches, there's another opening. You see that in the uh, in the middle there? Interesting, right? Um, a feature copied in many early modern triumphal arches. The arch is about 23 meters in height, 25 meters in width, and 11.85 meters deep. It's even bigger than the... Uh... Wait a minute, is it? I think, yeah, I think it is even bigger than Constantine's Arch. Let me just have a look at it up close. So this is not even close. Not even close to how the real thing is. But that's supposed to be 11 meters. This is copy and paste from the concert of this guy again. Bro, no. So this, this thing is not even close to 11 meters. And there's supposed to be a, an opening from here to you know to here and on the other side as well so that's not even close to being accurate that's a real shame uh, the three archways rest on piers in front of which are detached composite columns detached composite columns on pedestals winged fig trees are carved in relief in the spandrels uh, a staircase in the south pier leads to the top of the monument on which were statues of the Emperor. So these things are actually empty because you can, or well, partially hollow at least, because you can actually get up to the top. Actually, look at the size of the people compared to the size of the thing and you get the idea of just how out of scale the thing in game is. Just how big this thing is supposed to be. Look at the, look at the size of those people there against this thing and the de detached columns. So you see how the four columns, they're freestanding. There's a gap between the column and the arch. Um, uh, top of the monument on which were statues of the Emperor and his two sons on a four-horse chariot accompanied by soldiers. Well, those are gone now. Uh, history? The arch stands close to the foot of the Capitoline Hill. A flight of steps originally led to the central opening, as one still does on the Arch of Trajan at Ancona, Ancona. But the 4th century erosion had raised the level of the forum so much that a roadway was put through the arch for the first time. So much debris and silt eroded from the surrounding hills that the arch was embedded to the base of the columns. Oh, wow, so the whole thing was buried up to the base of the columns. That's crazy. So the so the sediment keeps being washed down from the uh, from the adjacent hills, and the level of the forum just kept rising and rising and rising over the time. That's really quick. I mean, considering it's only a few centuries, and like the the height of the place just rose up several meters. That's crazy. Um, the damage wrought by wheeled medieval and early modern traffic can still be seen on the column bases above the best relief of the socals. All right, I see. So, so at the very base of the column, you know, like chariots trying to get through the the gate, would occasionally hit the the base of the columns, and you can see the damage uh, on the columns because of that. Huh. So the carvings are all gone. There's a lot of text at the top. Yeah. So the one in game is completely inaccurate. That's that's a real shame. Um. During the Middle Ages, repeated flooding of the low-lying forum washed in so much additional sediment and debris that when Canaletto painted it in, 14, in 1742, only the upper half of the arch showed above ground. So here's, the, here's his painting. We'll look at it later. Uh, the well-preserved condition of the arch owes a great deal to its having been incorporated into the structure of a Christian church. Given nine. 1199 by Pope Innocent III to the Church of Saints Sergio and Baco. Uh, s s all right, half the arch belonged to the Cumini family, 
who were also attributed for the preservation of the structure. The stronghold included a tower placed on top of the arch itself. When the church was refounded elsewhere, the arch remained e e e I can always stumble over this word. Ecclesiastical property and was not demolished for other construction. So a church at some point there's a there's a stronghold in a church built right here. But that's all gone now. So in the medieval, medieval times, there are a bunch of forts in the old Roman forums. So that's the painting of it. So you see there, like you can't even see the base of the columns in that painting. So all this all this silt just got washed away from the mountains and then buried the whole Roman forums. Although I guess that was partly a good thing, because I mean, once it's buried underground, it's it's you know it's uh, protected from any further damage. I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's kind of crazy. Like, look at that. Look at that. All right. Well, that's the arch there. So, what else do we have to look at? Yeah, that's a real shame because that's just completely inaccurate. Uh, what else do we have to look at? Database locations and scroll across. So we have looked at the Basilica, the Mistenicio. The Temple of Antoninus and Anton Antonino and Faustina. I forgot what it was in Latin. So all these names are in Italian, which is I don't know about that. Like the the way they've arranged this database is they've put all the names in Italian, not in English, and not in the original Latin, but in modern day Italian. I'm not sure if that's the best choice, to be honest. Anyway. Uh, oh, this one. Um, Mercati di Tria Traiano. A fine example of the many enduring landmarks left behind by prolific Roman builder Emperor Ch Trajan. His Mercati is thought to be the world's oldest shopping mall, and when fully operational it housed no less than 150 shops and offices. Oh, it's not big enough for that in the game. Designed by Trajan's favorite architect, Apollodorus uh, of Damascus, between 107 and 110 CE, it was considered one of the wonders of the ancient world over, say, a 91 mile long aqueduct, providing the whole city with clean water. No, the shopping mall is far more impressive. Ah, uh, no, a shopping mall is quite important. Quite important to a city. An aqueduct's just an aqueduct. Well, I mean, water is important, but trade, trade is the uh, is the heart of the city. Let's go over there and um, have a look at it. So it's just to the north here, Maybe if I can find it. Uh, behind these things. Actually, it's it's to the uh, it's, it's this way. I think. Am I lost? Am I lost or written no, here? It is. What did I just do? All right, here it is. So here's uh, the market. Supposedly over a hundred something shops in this place. I mean, if each of these were a shop, and if there was like a, in, an interior, then yeah, maybe it's possible that this would be a shop. Not in this game though, it's, this game is just a, a semicircle with nothing all that special about it. Let me come up here, have a look. Ah, uh, not much up here. Not much up here. Alright, well let's try and find it. And have a look at any possible modern day remains. There it is, there. Trajan's Market. And is that what I think it is? Yeah, so that's a, that's another fake facade. So again, they're, they're doing um, repair work and preservation work, and they've painted on the, on, the, uh, on the scaffolding what it looks like underneath. Not very good though, it's not a very good effect. But there it is there. It's actually quite well preserved. Interesting. Uh, some broken bits at the top. Alright, let's go and look at Trajan's Market. Trajan's 
Fuck it. Hmm. Actually, do we have a uh, trade? Oops, Trajan's market images. So it looks like that. Actually, it's pretty well recreated in the game, except for the scale, and of course, no interiors. So the interior looks like this. Interesting. So it really is a shopping mall. Interesting. Um, I mean, shopping malls are nothing special today, but back then, this would have been uh, quite innovative. Uh, I just want to see the scale of it. Can I get some people in here? Do these pictures have people? Not really. It's not really helpful if I can't see people. Yeah, no, no people. Huh. Can I get one? I mean, is it. Is there people here? Not really. Kind of. It's not really clear. Oh, there's a car. So there's, a, there's like a, a camper van and there's a car be beside it. So maybe that's good enough for scale. So a person. Like, if you see, if you see that camper van at the bottom, bottom left, and try to imagine how big a person would be up against this thing. Wow, this thing is massively out of scale. Can I just jump down? This guy's still jump the ego. This thing is massively out of scale. Are, are you serious? This thing must be a quarter real size. I think it actually is like a quarter of real size. That's, that's insane. Go away, bro. No. I need my face. Ah, uh, that's a that's a real shame. That's a real shame. I mean, the I mean, you see how it looks, but I mean, the whole point of having it in like a in a game in a three D environment is is so you can see the thing. I mean, but when you put it in the wrong scale, like what's the point of putting it in? <laughs> you know, the whole point is to have it there. So you can walk around, run around, climb around, and see the thing, you know, without having to travel to Rome. But if it's the wrong scale, it's not really the thing, is it? Well, anyway, Trader's Market, much bigger than, than it is in game. Um, Latin, Mercatus Traiani, Italian Mercati di Traiano, is a large complex of ruins in the city of Rome, Italy, located on the Via del Fori Imperiali, at the opposite end to the Colosseum. The surviving buildings and structures, built as an integral part of Trajan's Forum, is nestled against the excavated flank of the Curie, Curie, Curino Hill, presented as a living model of life in the Roman capital, and a glimpse at the continuing restoration in the city, which reveals new treasures and insights about Ro ancient Roman architecture. Thought to be the world's oldest shopping mall, the arcades in Trajan's Market are now believed by many to be administrative offices for Emperor Trajan. Ah, wait a minute. So it's not a shopping mall, it's actually offices? The shops and apartments were built in a multi-level structure and it is still possible to visit several of the levels. Highlights include delicate marble floors and the remains of a library. So it isn't a market, it's actually, what, offices. Ah. Uh, construction Trajan's Market was probably built in 100 to 110 AD by Apollodorus of Damascus, an architect who always followed Trajan in his adventures and to whom Trajan entrusted the building of his, or the planning of his forum, and inaugurated in 113 AD. During the Middle Ages, the complex was transformed by adding floor levels, still visible today, and defensive elements such as the Torre del Milizzi, the Militia Tower, built in 1200. A convent which was later built in this area was demolished at the beginning of the 20th century to restore Trajan's market to the city of Rome. Interesting that, so they choose to destroy later architecture and restore Roman architecture. So don't worry about the uh, imperial stuff. Although uh, Mussolini had this agenda of like, you know, the, the whole point of fascism was to look back 
at the Roman Empire and say, hey, this was so great back then. Not sure how great it really was. But that was that was fascism. And so I guess that's that's the time when they kind of um, chose the Roman Empire uh, over the medieval and later uh, developments, I guess. Uh, that's a museum. I'm not. Sh I don't. I don't. I don't. I'm not interested in the museum. I'm interested in the actual thing. But it doesn't look like. I mean, all it does is describe the thing. It doesn't really say much about the history. Oh well, that's a, that's a shame. So not much to be seen there in Wikipedia. And not much to be seen in game either. It's way too small. Alright, what's next? Locations. Scroll across. Uh, oh, here we go. Trajan's Column. We just ran past it before. Another of Trajan's landmarks that still stands today, the Colana Trajana, was erected in memoriam of his victory in the Dacian Wars and was likely designed by Apollodorus, the most gifted architect in all of Rome. I, I'm not sure about gifted, but he got all the uh, contracts, so there you go. Uh, the column is most famous for its spiral bas-relief encompassing the entire pillar, which meticulously depicts the epic battles between the Romans and the Dacians. A spiral staircase within the structure leads to a platform that would have given a visitor the time of the time a magnificent view of the surrounding forum. Spiral staircases, which had been rare previously, became a symbol of imperial power after that, leading to all kinds of suggestive comments like, let me see your staircase. What? So, uh, note that though, there's a spiral staircase inside the column. There's a spiral staircase inside the column. Uh, let me just... Trajan's... Column... It's big enough to fit a staircase inside. Keep that in mind as we run over to it in the game and see how tiny this thing is. Well, I guess it's not that tiny. Look, there's a door that is literally shorter than me in the side. And if you go inside that door, I guess you can get into the uh, quote-unquote spiral staircase. So along the, the perimeter of this thing, there's like... Oh crap, I can't actually go around it. Alright, never mind, we can't go around it. So around the side of this thing is a bunch of sculptures of supposedly depicting the Emperor's battles against the uh, Dacians. Except it's not a spiral, it's kind of like a slanted ring around this thing. It's not really very good. Why would they do that? Why would they just make a spiral is it that difficult to make a spiral? Maybe it is. Maybe the, the game engine doesn't really allow it. Because they're ledges too. I was thinking like a spiral texture should not be that difficult. I mean, it's a bit tricky, but it's not that difficult. But maybe it's the spiral ledges that the game doesn't allow because I'm, I'm kind of just walking around this thing, right? Oh, I'm, I'm climbing, I'm parkouring around this thing. So maybe the game doesn't allow that, the spiral ledges. I'm not sure. But whatever it is, it's not a very good copy of Trajan's Column. Way too small and not even that accurate. But we will look at Wikipedia. How big it, like it, it's kind of deceptive, but you can't really tell how big it is. Spiral stair, so there's the door, there's the staircase inside. Can we get one... Oh, plaster cast, interesting. Can we get a... A picture with people in it? Let me just go... Trajan... Wait, why is it... Did it literally... Oh wait, did I close it? Wow. Let's go... Trajan's... Column... And try and get a picture with the person standing next to it. Oh no. Internet, please. Please, internet. Why? Why you do this? 
why you do this internet? There you go, alright. Uh, images for Trajan's column. And people, where are the people? No, that's the wrong one. Where are the people? No, there's no, no people there. Somebody just go up and stand next to it. Or can you not get up to it? Maybe you can't get next to it. But look, okay, look at the size. Can you see that? Uh, oh, hey, look, Tumblr. No, I want an image. I'm sorry, bro, but I want to see just the image. That's kind of too small. But you can kind of see how big the people are. So the door in the column should be like twice the height of a person. Approximately. You can't really tell, it's behind the scaffolding there. But the door is, is, is about twice the height of a person, I think, based on this picture here. Now, let's see if we can find some more pictures. With people. Well, there you go, there's another one there. So you see how tall people are? The column looks like that. Yeah. Yeah, a person wouldn't, would be like barely the, the first, like the bottom two segments of that base. Whereas in the game, in the game, I can get off without killing myself. Oh, hey. So in the game, I'm here. Again, I think this thing is like a quarter of actual size. Yeah, this is um, awkward. I mean, hey, your column is much smaller than I thought it should be. Awkward. Anyway, let's go to Wikipedia then and then just read about it. That's, that's way too small. That is way, way, way too small. Your column is too small, bro. Uh, you should um, enlarge it. Alright. So, Trajan's Column is a Roman triumphal column in Rome, Italy, that commemorates Roman Emperor Trajan's victory in the Dacian Wars. It was probably constructed under the supervision of the architect Apollodorus of Damascus at the order of the Roman Senate. It is located in Trajan's Forum, built near the Quirino Hill north of the Roman Forum. Completed in AD 113, the freestanding column is most famous for its spiral bass relief. So it's a real spiral, it's not just, you know, loops, diagonal loops. Uh, which artistically describes the epic wars between the Romans and Dacians. Its design has inspired numerous victory columns, both ancient and modern. The structure is about 30 meters in height, 35 meters including its large pedestal. The, so the pedestal itself is 5 meters tall. Oh, it's not that big. Although it is twice the... yeah, but no, no, it's, it's big. It's, it's twice the height of a person, yeah, as I said. Uh, the shaft is made from a series of 20 colossal Carrara marble drums, each weighing about 32 tons, with a diameter of 3.7 meters. The 190 meter frieze winds around the shaft 23 times, Inside the shaft, a spiral staircase of 185 steps, or stairs. That should be steps, because a stair is the whole thing. It should be 125 steps. Uh, provides access to a viewing platform at the top. The capital block of Trajan's Column weighs 53.3 uh, tons. The, that's the top bit, the top piece. Weighs 53.3 tons, which has to be lifted to a height of around 34 meters. Ancient coins indicate preliminary plans to top the column with a statue of a bird, probably an eagle, but after construction a statue of Trajan was put in place. This statue disappeared in the Middle Ages. <laughs> Just disappeared, nobody knows where it went. Uh, on December the 4th, 1587, the top was crowned by Pope Sixtus V with a bronze figure of St. Peter which remains to this day. It's slightly odd because the uh, the column still has all these pictures showing a military victory over the Dacians. But uh, hey, now it's St. Peter's column. Awesome, bro. Uh, it continues, frees, winds up the tower from base to capital, with the narrative band expanding from about 1 meter at the base of the column to 1.2 meters at the top. 
allowing for easier viewing of the freeze. Uh, the relief portrays Trajan's two victorious military campaigns against the Dacians, the lower half illustrating the, th the first and the top half illustrating the second. The two sections are separated by a personification of victory writing on a shield flanked on either side by trophies. Otherwise, the scenes of the freeze unfold continuously and in tip-top perspective. The imagery is not realistic as the sculptor pays little attention to perspective. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a continuous band that winds in a spiral above a column. I don't know how you do perspective for that, to be honest. Um, often, a variety of different perspectives are used in the same scene so that more can be revealed. For example, a different angle is used to show men working behind a wall. Uh, the scenes depict mostly the Roman army in military activities such as setting out to battle and engaging the Dacians as well as constructing fortifications and listening to the Emperor's address and the success he accomplished. The carvings are crowned with sailors, soldiers, statesmen and priests, showing about 2,500 figures in all and providing a valuable source of information for modern historians on Roman and barbaric arms and methods of warfare, such as, such as forts, ships, weapons, etc. The relief shows such details as a ballista or catapult, for example, the Emperor Trajan, depicted realistically in the veristic style, makes 59 appearances among his troops. Yeah, so I mean, these things, although they're, they're mostly, you know, gloating about killing a lot of dudes in the Middle East, they're kind of valuable for showing things like, you know, this guy's armor, for example. You can see it in the picture here. So you can see the armor he's wearing, you can see he's not wearing any pants. And you can see, like, he's got a, a device there. What is that thing? I don't even know. But some sort of engineering device, and they're building stuff. Can't really see because the picture is really zoomed in. But yeah, I mean, if you want to know what Roman life is, now you know that they don't wear pants. There you go. Spiral stair. Uh, the interior of Trajan's column is hollow, entered by a small doorway at one side of the base. The spiral stair of 185 steps. See, it steps here. That's correct. It says 185 stairs there, which is not right. I really should edit these things if they're wrong. Can I do that in this? All right, let's just try to find it. Um, okay, one hundred steps, and uh, I'll just edit briefly describe the changes you made. Minor. Grammar. Save page. Uh, is it gonna save or not? Maybe it's not gonna save. Maybe it doesn't wanna... You're not logged in. Your IP address will be perfectly visible. Alright, that's fine. Uh, is it fine? 185 steps. Yeah, okay, let's, let's go back to this. Uh... Wait a minute, where was I? Oh, here we go. Um, 185 steps gives access to the platform above. Having offered the visitor in antiquity a view over the surrounding Trajan's Forum, 43 window slits illuminate the ascent. Uh, okay, so you can get to the top. I doubt it will be open to the public, because you can imagine this thing will get overcrowded really quickly. Uh, the column stands 38.4 meters high from the ground to the top of the statue base, located immediately next to the large Basilica Alpia. It had to be constructed sufficiently tall in order to function as a vantage point and to maintain its own visual impact on the forum. The column proper, that is the shaft without the pedestal, and the statue at its base, and, and its base, is 29.76 meters high, a number which almost corresponds to 100 Roman feet, beginning slightly above the bottom of the base. The helical staircase inside measures a mere 8 centimeters less. Why? Okay, uh, why is that important? Uh, the column is composed of 29 blocks of lunar marble, weighing in total more than 1100 tons. Somebody... Uh, abbreviation. Uh, the spiral stair itself was carved out of 19 blocks, with a full turn every 14 steps. 
This arrangement required a more complex geometry than the more usual alternatives of 12 or 16. Yeah, so I mean 12, you just make a hexagon and then divide the hexagon into two to make, to make the 12 sides. And 16, you just make a, an octagon and divide that by two to get 16. But here, it's a full turn every seven, every 14 steps, which doesn't really divide neatly into anything. So it's kind of complicated to make a spiral staircase with a full turn every 14 steps. Uh, the quality of the craftsmanship was such that the staircase is practically even, and the joints between the huge blocks still fit accurately. Despite numerous earthquakes in the past, the column today leans at an angle of less than half a degree. So it's pretty well built. It is pretty well built. Trajan's column, especially its helixical, or helical, my bad, helical stereo design, exerted a considerable influence on subsequent Roman architecture. While spiral stairs were before still a rare sight in Roman buildings, this space-saving form henceforth spread gradually throughout the empire. Apart from the practical advantages it offered, the design also became closely associated with imperial power, being later adopted by Trajan's successors in Tonius, Pius, and Marcus Aurelius. In Napoleon's time, a similar column decorated with a spiral of relief sculpture was erected in the place when... That's supposed to be French, isn't it? I don't know how to pronounce it in French. In Paris to commemorate his victory at Austerlitz. Um, spiral staircases aren't that good. I mean, they, they look kind of cool and they're really complicated to build. But but especially like narrow spiral staircases, uh, spiral staircases are kind of not easy to climb up. It's, it's actually quite easy to fall off the thing because it gets very steep on the inside of the circle. So if you have like a big spiral staircase, then then everything's fine. If you have like a really small spiral staircase, it's it's just not very really good for your. Um, it's not very really safe. Anyway, the description. The inscription at the base of the column in finest lettering reads The Senate and the people of Rome give or dedicate this to the Emperor Caesar, son of the divine Nerva, Nerva Trianus Augustus Germanicus Dacius, Dacicus, Pontifex Maximus, in his 17th year in the office of tribune having been acclaimed six times as Imperator, six times Council, Pater Patriae, to demonstrate of what great height the hill was and place that was removed for such great works. Wait, what? Uh, it was believed that the column was supposed to stand where the saddle between the capital line and Curano Hills used to be, having been excavated by Trajan, but excavation has revealed that this is not the case. The saddle was where Trajan's Forum and Trajan's Market stood. Hence the inscription refers to Trajan's entire building project and the area of the Imperial Fora. This is perhaps the most famous example of Roman square capitals, a script often used for stone monuments and less often for manuscript writing. As it was meant to be read from below, the letters were slightly smaller than the the bottom letters were are slightly smaller than the top letters to give proper perspective. Some, but not all, word divisions are marked with a dot, and many of the words, especially the titles, are abbreviated. In the inscription, numerals are marked with a titulus, a bar across the top of the letters. A small piece at the bottom of the inscription has been lost. Ah, uh, interesting. Also, completely pointless information. Why? People just put random stuff in and they don't even think about whether it's important or not. So Imperial Caesar, uh, Divine Nerva, Triano. Oh, oh, that's that's it, the, it, the V is a U. So A U G is Augustus, Germanicus, Dacius, Pontifex Maximus. So, I mean, they use abbreviations everywhere. I'm not sure why. Yeah, so so it's like code. You can barely understand it, like, they don't actually spell out whole words. Uh, erection. Really? <laughs> they call it erection? I mean, it, 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 you erect the monument, right? You, you put it up. Can't that, how do you call it, like, construction or something like erection? Anyway, erection. 
it is assumed that the column drums were lifted by cranes into their place. Ancient sources as well as a substantial body of archaeological evidence prove that Roman engineers were capable of raising large weights clear off the ground. Uh, use pulleys, basically. Uh, the typical drum of Trajan's column weighs 32 tons, while the capital, the heaviest block above the base and pedestal, is even at 53.3 tons, which had to be lifted for 34 meters high. To save weight, the treads had probably been carved out before either at the quarry or in the situ. Even so, for such loads, the typical Roman tread reel crane, which could only reach a maximum height of 15 to 18 meters in any event, was clearly inadequate. Uh, let's just have a look at that. Uh, instead, a tower-like wooden construction was erected around the building site, in the midst of which the marble blocks were raised by a system of pulleys, ropes, and capstans. These were powered by a large workforce of men and possibly also draft animals, spread out on the ground. According to modern calculations, eight capstans were needed to hoist the 55-ton base block while the length of rope required for the highest drums measured some 210 meters, assuming two block pulleys. Such a lifting tower was later also used to great effect by the Renaissance architect Domenico Fontana to relocate obelisks in Rome. From his report, it became obvious that the coordination of the lift between the various pulling teams required a considerable amount of concentration and discipline, since if the force was not applied evenly, the excessive stress on the ropes would make them rupture. In case of Trajan's columns, the difficulties were exacerbated even further by the simultaneous work on the neighboring Basilica Alba, which limited the available space so that the capstan crews had proper access only from one side. Alright, well, there's a whole bunch of pulleys and uh, a lot of people. So the tread wheel? That's not... that's not what I was looking at. So there's a, there's a tread wheel Crane, no, this one. Why, why is it linked to something else? Tread wheel. Why would you. <laughs> Man. So the tread wheel crane, basically a guy runs along something like a hamster wheel, which pulls a rope. Huh, funny. Ah, uh, like that, apparently. Ah, interesting. Interesting. Also, seems a bit dangerous, doesn't it? Interesting. So, um, so it looks like that. Alright, so it's kind of like a, a giant bit of wood, a wheel. It's stabilized by more ropes, and then the wheel is connected to more ropes in the pulley and so you run along the wheel and you and you wind the rope up. Alright, I see it. Uh, purpose? It was traditionally thought that the column was a propagandist monument glorifying the Emperor's military exploits. However, the structure would have been generally invisible and surrounded by the two libraries in Trajan's Forum and because of the difficulty involved in following the frieze from end to end, it could be said to have much less propaganda value. Uh, on the other hand, as Paul Vin Vinny? V Viney? V what language is that? As, as Paul notes, the relief could be read vertically from below, with the stereotypical, highly recognizable figure of the emperor recognizable across the bands of images. Just as on the Colonne Vin Vendome, uh, Napoleon's figure can be picked up scene after scene. Also, the two libraries surrounding it provide a platform to view the column if the viewer stood on the top floors, making the frieze much more visible all the way up. After Trajan's death in uh, 117, the Roman Senate voted to have Trajan's ashes buried in the column's square base, uh, which is decorated with the captured Dacian arms and armor. His ashes and those of his wife, Plotina, were set inside the base in golden urns. The ashes no longer lie there. Well, obviously the golden urns were stolen at some point. Uh, who knows where the uh, ashes are? Um, there you go, column. Interesting. So, what else? What are we gonna do next? So, both of these are just really small in the game. 
and I'm just kind of really disappointed by how small these things are. This is this is like ridiculously small. These shops are just I don't know, I don't know. Like you run past this thing in the game, and you don't think much of it because it's so small. But you know, back in the Roman times, it's one of the most important places in the whole city. Alright, what else do we have? So we got through those. That's a church, that's a bridge. Piazza Navona is, is a is a Renaissance square. Um Is that nearby? No, that's not nearby. That might be that might be it for the uh, for heroes going. Oh, that that's uh, that's underground though. This might be it for the Roman forums. There's a bunch of baths that we can look at. The Arc de Tito. Oh, here, here's his. So he's um Septimus Severus's arch. We we looked at it in Wikipedia. Standing at the foot of the Cappadoglio in the Roman Forum, Iaco di Septimio Severo is a triumphal arch commemorating the party and victories of Emperor Septimius uh, Severus. After Septimius died, his sons Caracalla and Gator shared rule as joint emperors. However, in 212, Caracalla had Gator assassinated and subsequently destroyed all records of Gator's existence. Including Gator's image and inscriptions on the arch. I guess a healthy sibling rivalry wasn't so healthy for Gator. Oh, funny, funny, Sean. Um, apparently the the other arch is here as well. Let me just flick through back to that quickly if I can. Where was it? The other arch. Actually, there's also that. That's the uh. Actually, what what is? Anyway, we'll come back to that. So, built by Emperor Domitian in 82 CE to honor his dead brother Titus, the Arco di Tito commemorates Titus's victory in the sack of Jerusalem. This arch became the inspiration for many arches to be erected thereafter, most notably the triumphal arch in Paris as well as Constantine's arch. Arco de Tito, should we look this up? Probably should. Um, it's probably like... Wait a minute. That's Italian, was it in English? Titus? Well, here's the guy. Where's his arch? Adult life, he went and conquered Jerusalem, which is kind of awesome. Not really. Uh, what is this? Oh, the destruction of Pompeii. Public works, death. There, the Arch of Titus. Uh, the Arch of Titus is a 1st century honorific arch located on the Via Sacra, Rome just to the southeast of the Roman Forum. It was constructed in 82 AD by the em Roman Emperor Domitian, shortly after the death of his older brother Titus to commemorate Titus's victories, including the Siege of Jerusalem in 70 AD. The Arch of Titus has, has provided the general model for many of the triumphal arches erected since the 16th century. Perhaps most famously, it is the inspiration for the 1806 Arche Triumphi. Tri tri is that? Uh, it's it's French. I'm really bad with French. In Paris, France, uh, completed in 1836. The arch is large with both fluted and unfluted columns. The latter being a result of 19th century restoration. The spandrels on the upper left and right of the arch contain personifications of victory as a winged woman. Between the spandrels is the keystone on which there stands a female on the east side and a male on the west side. The soffit of the axial archway is deeply coffered with a relief of the apotheosis of Titus at the center. The, structural, the sculptural program also includes two panel reliefs lining the passageway within the arch. 
Both commemorate the joint triumph celebrated by Titus and his father Vespasian in the summer of 71. The south panel depicts the spoils taken from the Temple of Jerusalem, the Golden Candelabra or Menorah is the main focus and is carved in deep relief. Other sacred objects being carried to the triumphal in the triumphal procession are the gold trumpets and the table of shoe bread. Uh, the spoils were likely originally coloured gold, with the black ground in blue. In the, the background in blue. In 2012, the Arch of Titus Digital Restoration Project discovered remains of yellow ochre paint in the mineral relief. So, that's the other thing too. Like all of these things. A lot of the Greek temples and apparently the Roman buildings, they used to be painted. Like, they're all made in marble, but a lot of these things used to be painted. But all the paint has been washed away. And so a lot of people, like, they look back and they thought, hey, everything's white back then. <laughs> because they look at all the, Ro all the Roman ruins and all the Greek ruins and everything's white. And so they thought, well, everything's white. But actually, a lot of the, the temples were painted, except that paint back then didn't last very long. Because they didn't have very good chemistry, and you know it wasn't very waterproof. So, and especially the, the the Greek temples, like every time there's a festival or there's a special, you know, a, a special date, they would kind of paint the temples and then have the festival, and it would be really like really brightly colored. But then the paint wouldn't last very long. So, like when we look at these things now, we we think. Well, well, you know, the Romans and the Greeks, they were all white buildings. Actually, they were not. They were really brightly painted, so... So there you go. Uh, the south panel... I think I... Did I read this? I read that already. The north panel depicts Titus as triumphator, attended by various genie and lectors, who carry faces. Oh, these are the... These are the, uh... The, 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 the um... I'll just, I'll just click on it. It's the, it's the, it's the grain. Yes, yeah, the grain with the, with the axe thing. A bundle. A bundle of wooden rods. Sometimes including an axe with a blade emerging. So these symbolizes... So this is like symbols of power and jurisdiction. I guess symbols of like sovereignty and all that. It's a bit weird, to be honest. Like it's just a bundle of sticks. Um... What are these things? Lectors? Uh, oh, civil servants. Okay, I see. Uh, a helmeted Amazonian valor leads the quadriga or four-horsed chariot, which carries Titus. Winged victory crowns him with a laurel wreath. The juxtaposition is significant in that it is one of the first examples of divinities and humans being present in one scene together. This contrasts with the panels of the Arapasius, where, oh no, that's Parkins, isn't it? That's the Temple of Peace. Where humans and divinities are separated. Yes and no, I thought... I don't know. But, but you know, the emperors were eventually deified. Like, they, they became gods. Or they, they became worshipped as gods. So, and at this point, Titus is dead. So Titus would have been deified as well. So Titus is no longer a person, he's a god now. You know, given well, you know, the Romans... Well, that's how it worked in Roman religion, I think. Uh, the sculpture of the outer faces of the two great peers was lost when the Arch of Titus was incorporated in medieval defensive wars. The attic of the arch was originally crowned by a more, sta was by more statuary, perhaps of a gilded chariot. The main inscription used to be ornamented by letters made of perhaps silver, gold, or some other metal. Like, just imagine. Imagine how this stuff used to be. Let me just go back to the, the Arch of Titus. So, it's marble, but it's also painted, and also it had gold or silver lettering. And, you know, and gold statues at the top. So these things were, like, really, like, there's a lot of color, you know? A lot of really precious metals too. So, you know, at the time it must have looked pretty amazing. I'm in the completely the wrong place. I need to get behind the hill to get back to the forum. Alright, coming through. Out of the way. And all of that is obviously gone now, but... You know, Rome used to be really colourful. 
like the Roman forums used to be really colorful, and I guess the whole empire used to be really colorful, depending on the, you know whether they could get the paint to stick. And the Greeks too. I mean, these days you look at it, oh, it's all white. It's all white. I guess everything used to be white. No, man, white is boring. Put more colors in. If you don't, if you don't know your architecture history, that might not be significant to you guys. But it's just a, it's just this mistake that architects have have made over time. And at some point, they they glorified the white. And they kind of point to the ancient ruins and they say, hey, they used to do it white, and they were awesome. Uh, when in fact they were completely wrong. So here is the thing. Is that supposed to be it? That's not even close, is it? Oh well. So uh, there's no copper ceiling, there's no carvings, there's no nothing. Nothing. Alright, well, that's disappointing. Okay, what else? What else? What else is here? Database. Locations. I really want to go look at that pyramid. At the walls. It's kind of far away. I might just go over there. After we finish looking at all the stuff here in the uh, forum. So Colosseum we've looked at. Arches we've looked at. Yeah, we looked at those. Temple of Saturn? Temple of Saturn is probably important. A monument to the agricultural deity Saturn. This temple stands at the western end of the Roman Forum, also known as the Aerarium. The Roman national treasure was kept here along with the Republic's reserves of gold and silver. Like the Temple of Castor and Pollux, it at one time housed uh, the official scales. From this one might be able to surmise that Saturn was not only rich but likely had an eating disorder. No, you idiot. The scales, the scales is to weigh the gold and silver, and also when they issue coins, they weigh them to make sure that all the coins are the same, although if you use gold and silver and bronze as coins, what happens is they get clipped, so people will kind of take pieces out of it, out of the coins, after a while you get these really clipped coins where it's only a fraction of the original coin. Because, I mean, they, they, if you issue, like, that's why they don't issue gold and actually, like, they don't issue gold coins anymore. Or they do, but, you know, the coins in general circulation. The metal is worth less than the money it represents. Because if it's worth more, then people will just take the, take the metal and, and, you know, forget about the coin. But if, if the coin, if the metal is worth less than the money, then it's, it's more worthwhile to keep the money they melt melted down for the metal. So back then when they used gold and silver coins, like everything gets clipped and everything gets, you know, people try to cheat and then kind of steal bits of gold from the coins themselves. Uh, so the Temple of Saturn, let me try and find it. It's at the western end, right? So it's this way, oh, there it is. Only a little bit of it left. Not very much. There's the foundations though. Maybe we should come have a look at the foundations. This guy is yelling again. Can this guy not yell so much? Please. Alright, so here is the Temple of Saturn. Kind of. Not really, but it's kind of the Temple of Saturn. Alright. Temple of Sat... No, Saturn. Well, I mean, that's all that's left of it anyway. Uh, the Temple of Saturn is a temple to the god Saturn in ancient Rome. Thanks, Wikipedia. The Temple of Saturn is a temple to the god Saturn, guys. Wikipedia. The original dedication of a temple to Saturn was traditionally dated to 497 BC, but ancient writers disagreed greatly about the history of this site. The ruins of the site stand at the foot of the Capitoline Hill in the western end of the Forum Romanum. A uh, gradual collapse has left nothing but the remains of the front portico standing. Alright, so, so the remaining columns is the front of the building. The partially preserved pediment displays the inscription Senatus Populesque... Popu... Popul... Populusque? Senatus Populusque Romanus. 
incendial consumptium resituit, meaning the Senate and the people of Rome have restored what fire consumed. Uh, the pediment and eight surviving columns represent one of the iconic images of Rome's ancient architectural heritage. Well, I mean, it will be much better if the whole thing survives, but I guess you have to live with it. Uh, construction of the temple is thought to have begun in the later years of the Roman Kingdom under Tarquinius Superbus. Its inauguration by the council Titus Latius took place in the early years of the Republic. The temple was completely reconstructed by Venatius Plancus in 42 BC. The present ruins represent the third incarnation of the Temple of Saturn, replacing a second incarnation that had been destroyed by fire by the fire of Carnius in 283 AD. The extant inscription on the frieze commemorates the restoration undertaken after the fire. Uh, according to ancient sources, the statue of the god in the interior was veiled and equipped with a scythe. The image was made of wood and filled with oil. The legs were covered with bands of wool, which were removed only on December the 17th day of Saturnalia. Uh, the image was made of wood and filled with oil? The statue of the god was made of wood and filled with oil, and the temple burned down at one point. Hmm. Okay. In Roman mythology, Saturn ruled during the Golden Age, and he continued to be associated with wealth. The temple housed the treasury, where the Roman Republic reserves of gold and silver were stored. The state archives and the insignia and official scale for the weighing of metals were also housed here. Later, the aerarium was moved to another building, and the archives transferred to the nearby tabularium. The temple's podium in concrete, covered with travertine, was used for posting bills. <laughs> so, after a while, they stopped using this building as the uh, as the treasury. It's not very well protected, to be perfectly honest. Like it's just a freestanding building. You keep all your gold and silver in this place. There's no security, man. Oh well. So there's the Temple of Saturn. Alright, what other things do we have to look at in our tourist adventures in Rome? Let's see. Oh, we've got the Temple of Saturn. Temple of Vespasian? Is that nearby? I don't think so. So if those three are on the Capitoline Hill, there you go there. The Pantheon, Mausoleum of Augustus, did we look at that? I don't think we looked at that closely yet. Maybe we should. Um, no, these are, these are somewhere else. Wait a minute, what is this? Uh, that's something else. Rome. Gates. Alright, so I, so I think we, uh, yeah, I, I think we found all the locations in the Roman forums. I guess I'll take a break here. Maybe to... like in the next... Uh, we'll look at two things in the next video maybe. That might be a bit short. I want to look at that city pyramid in the city walls, this one. And then I want to look at... I guess we should look at the, uh, the mausoleum of Augustus. And then... I don't know if I want to look at very much else, to be honest. I mean, there's a few gates, a few bridges, but not too many important things after that. And that might be it, so I'm gonna just leave it there. I mean, there's, there's other buildings too, like Renaissance churches and whatnot. Nothing all that special. I think we've looked at all these special things that I can think of anyway. Alright, so let me just take a break here. And in the next video, we'll go look at that silly pyramid in the walls and uh, see what the story is behind that. I'll see you guys.